Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Dartmouth Curling Club and the 2020 Scotties Tournament of Hearts. This is Draw 1. I'm Selena Thompson, joined by Denise Nicholson. Welcome. Hi. Shouldn't say welcome to your club, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Thanks for uh, for joining us. So, like I said, draw one of the Scotties. Eight teams vying for the one spot to uh, go on to the national. Team Breen, Team Arsenal. That's our feature game. We're on sheet D. There's three other matchups going on on the other stream. Maquette and Driscoll versus Brothers. We'll keep you updated, or you can flip back and forth. And rounding out the field, Hilliard and Matatal there on sheet B, and Jones and McAvoy there on sheet E. You can catch all the scores on nscurl.com. We'll try and keep you updated as the game goes on, but for now, back on sheet D, Teresa Breen, Marianne Arsenault. They've played each other a few times over the years. Mm -hmm. A couple times, I bet. Breen playing out of the Halifax Curling Club. They're throwing the blue stones with Hammer. Arsenal, they're in yellow. Teams had a draw to the button uh, competition for Last Rock after each of their respective practices, and the closer draw was awarded or was uh, earned by Team Breen, so they have Last Rock with those blue stones. And so we saw first one for Team Arsenal go a little deep in the rings, corner guard for Team Breen. And it's a good time to introduce the teams as Emma Logan throws her second stone. And Emma is lead rocks for Team Arsenault. Jen Baxter throws second. Christina Black at third. And of course, Marianne Arsenault, the skip. They have fifth, Kristen Clark. She was out there for practice with them. And their coach, Stu McLean. He's up here hanging out with us. And for Team Breen, lead. It says Amanda Simpson on her shirt, but uh, she's going by Amanda England nowadays. Jocelyn Adams at second. Marley Powers at third. Teresa Breen the skip. Fifth player, Mary Sue Radford, and their coach is Jeff Wilson. Jeff's not here. He's playing in the men's division, except uh, he's got a super spare in for him this week. So Mary Sue will uh, go out for any timeouts if the team wants to. And here for the Provincial Scotties, 10 ends of play. We're used to watching eight, so an additional two ends. 38 minutes of thinking time per timeouts. And we'll have a break after the fifth end. I think that's it for the introductions. How'd I, thought, I do? I thought it was very thorough. <laughs> Got her done. So what's going on here in the first? We had the that deep stone, corner guard, and then now a series of draw a hit. Yep, and a good draw there by Jen Baxter. Team Arsenal, of course, without hammer, they'll want to keep play to the center of the rings. Good situation for Team Breen starting here, though, with the one, uh, the lone stone in the rings is at the back, and the corner guard is just asking to be used. So Jocelyn Adams will try and make you use that. We watch the teams throw uh, outside in for draw to the button in practice, and very rarely do they ever throw the inside out, so it's usually a bit of a guess. Yeah. This one's going a little deep. They're hoping that'll hang on. It's good. Not shot stone. But not to be ignored either. Yeah, Marianne's going to be very aware of that. There's your outside in. I think that's that guard's going to be in a good position. I think they can get around that. Yeah, a nice tight center guard's always useful. Especially for the team without hammer. They're trying to keep play to the middle. This one was a little wider. Marianne uh, asking Jen to go out just wide of the draw to button pass. So a bit fresh. Both sweepers really trying to get that curl. You saw them both hop on the outside there to try to make it curl a little bit more. I think it's so 
so cool that we're aware of that and can do things like that now. Yeah, directional sweeping really did change the game, especially the first year where everyone was uh, figuring out which broom head was going to do the most. Yeah. And so we can't throw with those, throw or, or sorry, we can't sweep with those hair brooms anymore. They were a trip though, weren't they? <laughs> it was interesting. I have to do a double take in league play because uh, a lot of leagues still don't require, unless it's a competitive league, they don't require the the, the yellow uh, heads. The yellow heads. Yeah. The approved material. Yeah. It's amazing how long the same uh, same old heads will hang around for. Like you realize how long you've had your broom when you <laughs> see what color the head is. Yeah, they just wick the water away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, New ones get uh, pretty dirty quickly. Yeah. So Jocelyn rolled out on her hit, was able to get that yellow stone, but the come around's still there. Christina Black's throwing now. Do you think Mariana gave about the same amount of ice there? Tighten it up a little bit. I don't remember where she had it on the first one. I know she was into the 12 foot, and that one was too, so yeah. probably tightened up a little bit. Yeah. Second time down the path sometimes is a little straighter, but this one really is curling. Makes me think sh that uh, Marianne tightened up the ice. Looking really good though, if they can get this to the forefoot. Great shot from Christina. Really good. Not really a choice here for Teresa. <laughs> Getting exciting already. Teresa expecting not a lot of curl. She doesn't want to leave the shooter out front, though. Would love to catch the outside of the shot Yellowstone. <laughs> this will be close. Catches it. Will she get the back one? Nuts. Good result, though, for Marley. Yeah. And that blue one kind of rolled over in front of protects their one at the back. I mean, that's not a stone you can count on, but it doesn't hurt to have it protected. Also forces Team Arsenault to throw this draw in a, another new path. They threw it really well the second time in the same path, so a bit of an adjustment here. Move the broom over rock or, and a half or so. This one's hanging a little wider, waiting for the curl. And just didn't want to go over that center line. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's probably wide open from the hack. Teresa's indicating they may be able to get an inside roll from Marley. Nose wouldn't be the end of the world. Really wouldn't want to hit this high side and jam on their own at the back though. So I'll have to try and wait for that curl, make sure. Jocelyn's on this one early. If it's by, they may be able to make this roll. Ooh, what a great shot. There's still a little corner of it showing, but not very much. No, probably not enough for Marianne to hit, so mm -hmm. they're looking at the draw. There is a short run back Marianne could play, but it's pretty risky if that were ever to jam on the back. So the shot's stone is that blue stone half in the eight foot at the top so Marianne has the four foot to come to she's not too upset if this is behind the t-line it's just uh, it'll prevent that blue from counting on to skip stones. This is Marianne Arsenault.
I expect us to follow a similar path to Christina's. Yeah, it looks like it really wants to go now, though, doesn't it? Trying to get that curl now at the end. Perfect Excellent. weight. Uh, great weight. <laughs> Sits right on the button. I think the most of that stone will be open, though. Yep. Teresa seems to think that. Although she's giving considerably more ice than she gave uh, on that similar hit higher up in the house. Yeah, so this would be probably a little bit less weight, and it's okay to roll to the side on this one. She has the 8 foot to roll to. She can even be a little bit into the 12 foot, just not full. I want to watch the line close on this one. Marley's didn't break like crazy, but this one is going for the line. Got to work hard to get this by that top 12 foot. Oh, just too bad. Just Rex. That's where the shooter goes, though. Yep. A little spin back. Wow. Spun almost a whole rock back. So yellow's one and blue are two and three. Yeah, so Marianne, it's, uh, she can play aggressively and play into the rings. It's just it's really hard to ignore that stone at the back 12 foot. She doesn't have any access to the one on the top 8 foot. So if she's playing hard for a steal, she can play uh, play right into the rings. It has to be perfect though or there might be a shot for three. Hit the back one, roll a little wide, shot for two for Breen. So certainly the more aggressive play is draw in on top of your own, try and get a little piece buried, be in the forefoot. And the more defensive call. It's at the back. Try and sit two at the back. I just think that's uh, a little bit hard to do. Roll too far and could give up a couple. Yep. And there really is no right answer. It's the first end, so you can take a little bit of a a risk. Yep, there's only a right answer for you. Like for what you want to throw. The aggressive player in me loves that there's a rock on the button and you could try and steal. <laughs> yeah. It's very exciting. Oops, second thoughts. We'll see. I don't know if Marianne got in the hack and looked or talked to the front end about what they preferred. We may see a change in the shot. Some people change the shot from the hack. It's, it's good to go back Bobby. down, yeah. Yeah, it's certainly more effective to go back down than to try to correct your strategy from the hack. If you've got the time to do it. I like this call. Aggressive. It's nice and aggressive. <laughs> yeah. If you miss it real bad, it's a chance for three. But it's a real good chance to steal. Marianne did just throw this as well, so give her the benefit of... Uh, <laughs> she'll probably be pretty close. So I think the call would be to just over curl where she just threw and leave it a little higher in the rings.
Waiting for this one to curl. Starting to go now. Remember, it didn't break before really hard across that center line. We Seems need this to be second shot, though. Try and lock it right on the top. Well, pretty good weight. Yeah. Is there a double for Teresa? It's the only thing about it being right in line. Might jam on the back one, but I think if you keep your shooter, it's still good for two. I think that one needed to curl a bit more or be a little deeper and not have that separation to allow the double. So we've seen that a few times in that spot. Not crossing the center line really hard, although a couple hits have gone. They might have uh, been thrown a little differently. Caught the center line in a different part of the sheet. So this could be for as many as three for Teresa. I'm waiting for this one to curl as well. A little high side, the first, the top yellow, and uh, shooter rolls out. Didn't come up for Teresa. Steal of one. The risk pays off for Team Arsenault. Without hammer, they'll lead. one nothing going into the second end. And we're the last sheet to get onto the second end, so it's time for updates. <laughs> uh, so... Hilliard versus Matatal. Matatal with a single in the first. Brothers and Maquette and Driscoll blank. Brothers retains Hammer in two. And Colleen Jones took two on Julie McAvoy in the first. Lots of rocks in play as we look across the sheets. Lots of people out in the ice shed watching today, too. Yeah, we get lots more on the evening draws when we have some bleachers out. So if you do manage to have a chance to come to the Dartmouth Curling Club, bring your jacket. <laughs> Gets a little chilly, but uh, you can cheer on your team. There's seating inside as well. And we talked about the teams vying to represent Nova Scotia at the Scotties. It's February 15th to 23rd at Mosaic Place in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Might want to wear a coat there, too. Yes. <laughs> and we've got lots of curling all week. The finals are on Sunday afternoon um, for the women. And we're also, at the same time, if you haven't been paying attention to the men's provincial championships, we are also hosting the Deloitte Tankard. So the women's draws and men's draws alternate. Right now we're on the women's draw, obviously. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. will be the men's draw. 2 p.m. women's, 7 p.m. Uh, men's. And then it'll reverse for Wednesday. Flip again for Thursday and back on Friday so that all the teams can finish their seven round robin games. Top three teams move to the playoffs. And it's pretty cut and dry. If you're not the top three, you're not in playoffs. Top record from the round robin goes to the final. Avoids the semi. It's a long week because there's a lot of games, but it's a short week in that like every game and every end really makes a difference in your results. Every end counts, and we were saying earlier, uh, because it's just the top three that move on, um, when you start to look at two and three losses, you start to get a little nervous, because that's usually where it ends. Usually uh, you can afford a loss, or sometimes two. Start to hit three or more and uh, worry about your chances. You need to have a couple things happen for you. And this is a really close and competitive women's field this year. So I expect it'll be close with the records at the end. It's 
So uh, Teresa Breen has one on the button and Marianne has a yellow center guard you can see there. Team Breen, they threw up the corner guard last end, but uh, here in two, they're playing around the center. That one comes up light from Amanda England, though. Not what the team would have been looking for. They don't want to have uh, their own center guards with Hammer. Why do you suppose that is? <laughs> I mean, I think I know the answer, but for the listeners. <laughs> I mean, they've got a blue rock in the house. Why wouldn't they want to protect that now? Well, it's not in a great scoring position. So if you have a rock at the back of the forefoot and guard it, and the other team, because draws will curl more than hits, can come around just like Jen's trying to do here, although she just, just wicked the guard. If that yellow stone had... Uh, gone right on the button in front of that blue it's a really low chance that blue is going to score two points this end so you do need to keep your options open with last rock the whole idea is give yourself a chance to score even if it's not for two you'd like to have that center open and you can bank points so try and um, keep rocks in the side and uh, 12 foot and 8 foot and try and keep them in the rings, maybe not in scoring position at any given time, but uh, try and maneuver it in a way that if you were to remove a keystone of the other teams, that those would then count. So when we're talking about a chance to score, we're not talking about like a triple run back to hopefully get one. We're talking about, I would like to throw a draw to the forefoot here. Yes, exactly. Oh, look at this squeak and buy for Teresa Breen. Still a little heavy, but yep. uh, gets by. So Team Breen's sitting too. And of course, everything I'm saying goes out to lunch if the, the team you're playing against misses their shots, right? It could be great to have a center guard and rocks around it, but uh, if the other team's making their shots and playing well, it usually doesn't go well for the team with Hammer when there's a lot of mess around the center. The skip's usually left with not much. It's not a whole lot of fun uh, throwing that last rock, looking at a wall of granite, and hoping for the best. <laughs> Yeah, hope's not like a great uh, strategy in curling. <laughs> this one's curling like crazy. They were looking for a run here. Watch where this blue goes. And back, luckily, shoots one of the blue stones through the back, offsets those blues a little bit, clears out the front. So good result overall. Yeah, that just, shot worked uh, out for everyone, I think. Yeah, Team Breen's okay. Teresa will have a probably have a shot on her last. And for Team Arsenal, a bit of breathing room. They have some backing. They have something to come to. We always talk about strategy and what's the shot to call, but uh, execution... <laughs> means a lot in this game as well. Yeah. You can call the perfect game, but if you don't make any of your shots, you'll never win. Yep. Armchair curlers make a lot more shots. <laughs> oh, of course they do. It's so easy. Yeah. Trying to get this blue stone a little closer to the forefoot, right into the top eight there. And that's pretty much dead on what Teresa asked for, so they've got to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, and, and some people would say, well, why don't you want it to curl around the guard? If it's around the guard and Team Arsenal lays one right in the button area, it's going to be hard to remove. So you're forcing play away from that forefoot area by leaving this in the top of the rings. Still out counting the yellow at the back. Trying to keep this high side, maybe clip the back blue. Nuts on the back. So still two, but that yellow is in a pretty good spot for Team Arsenal. Like I said, Team Breen, the tendency here would be, hey, let's play a center guard. But if a yellow were to ever make its way into that button area, your center guard's going to hurt you. So yeah. to come around again. 
This is tough, but Marley can corner freeze the yellow on the top 12 as well. A couple options there. You can see while this rock is moving that the players on the other team are preparing. They're watching the rock move and the next player to throw is cleaning their stone and being ready. That's something you really notice at this level that there's no no time wasted. Yeah, they are on the clock and you want to preserve as much thinking time as possible. You see Marley there. Line was great, but that one is quite light. So here's the opening for Team Arsenal. This is what they were waiting for. And that's why you don't want to have your stones behind the T-line generally speaking because they have that word we don't like to say backing. <laughs> It's almost like we predicted. <laughs> so Christina Black throwing here. Trying to lay this one into the forefoot. Doesn't want to be on the front. Seems to be having a lot more movement on the outturn coming home than going away. We saw a couple stay a bit straight the other first end. You're right. Christina wasn't too far off on weight on that, erect on the top 12 foot stone. Yeah, it did move quite a bit more, like you said. So not a lot accessible for either team on that outturn side of the sheet. Perhaps a tap for Team Arsenault, which is why it's good to bounce that shot or that thrown stone off for Christina. But Team Breen now saying, well, we'll leave the stuff out front. Let's just get another one in there. Really is, could be uh, a good end for either team at this point. So when they want this blue rock to stop, I mean, I, we could see what side of the sheet we want it to stop on, but how deep into the house do you expect they want it to be? I think top eight, although this one looks terribly light. And is it terrible to be terribly light there? Like, is that if light it's shot? overlapping, might not be the greatest. Like that one just uh, rolls off, but isn't really able to be uh, raised into the forefoot area. Yeah, that kind of is unfortunate for Team Breen. I think the only thing Marion has is this tap here that they're looking at. So when you're throwing a tap, you throw a little heavier than the draw would be to the same spot, but you have to uh, ice yourself as if you were throwing a draw. <laughs> and taps are so hard to call. So you typically will give a little less ice because you're throwing a bit more weight then you're hitting the stone higher than where the draw would end up. <laughs> so if this is made, they're going to want to pay attention to where the shooter remains. They can actually guard the forefoot with the shooter. Teresa won't have much to do. Maybe a raise on her center blue. That front is pretty congested right now. So here's the raise attempt. Waiting for it to curl. We have seen good curl here. This is a little extra weight. This one looks really close. Wasn't well, that exciting? Needed to come up a hair more, but does the trick. Yep. What does Teresa have here? This is where we talk about leaving yourself something on your last. She doesn't have anything right now. They're connecting a lot of rocks with their brooms there, but I'm not. 
Yeah. They're worried about the center line one. She, they could also double peel the blue yellow combination where Marley's just ended up. Try and open up that shot stone <laughs> and leave the blues guarded. Marianne would have a draw then. So it looks you like they've have to landed hope for on, a miss. <laughs> looks like they've landed on running this blue back into hoping to go yellow yellow. Yep. There's always a risk when you're playing weight like this because there's a lot of yellows around. A lot and, of things uh, can happen. You're raising a blue into a yellow with blue backing, so to not hit this too high side. So here we go. Run back, trying to clear out some yellow. Might catch the other guard. Just does. Does a decent job of opening up the center, actually. It certainly looks different than it did before. But uh, I think Marianne will probably hit that second stone and give Teresa a draw for the single. So if Marianne didn't throw right now, Teresa would have a shot for two. Marianne's probably going to throw, though. She's probably going to throw, yeah. <laughs> I was looking around to give updates from the other sheets. Oh, I've got a blank in Jones versus McAvoy, but there's no score on B yet. When there is one, we'll let you know. So what do you think, Denise? I would be pretty tempted to hit that blue. The yellow um, over on the side forefoot is third shot, so that blue at the back four probably isn't going to come into play. I'd be hitting that blue at the back. I would probably. Yeah, they haven't really looked at it. They're, they're playing aggressively, obviously, trying to guard yep. the shot stone. It certainly is appealing when you think, you know, you could score a couple that way, but... My worry is always in something like this, if you over curl and you're not shot, then <laughs> you leave the shot for two. Yeah. It was the risk in the last end as well, and it paid off. Certainly have chosen the more aggressive call both times. Just while Marianne's cleaning her stone here, I want to point out where the sweepers from the other team are standing, on the side opposite to where Marianne's got her broom. So there's no way they're going to interfere with the, what's going to happen here. Is that a reminder for club curlers? It sure is. <laughs> we see that and learn to curl an awful lot. Uh, <laughs> just standing and going, so, someone can't see. Yep. <laughs> you have to get out of the way. And nobody's trying to be disrespectful. No, but, absolutely uh, not. But these, these folks know exactly what they're doing, so it's a good, good opportunity to observe. They need to get some curl out of this rock. Trying to get it desperately to center, not leave a hole. It's really, moving. That'll do the trick. Yeah. Good work, sweepers. So a good result there. Probably weren't going to sit two after this, so guard. They're coming in the rings. There's no, uh, no real good run back opportunity for Teresa either. Pretty good spot for that yellow stone. We're still looking at how to how to get a single point right now. Usually from here you could see the clocks at the other end of the sheet. Where are they this year? They must be at this end. Yep. They uh, there used to be the the wide ones, but now they're on monitors. Just down from us. Everybody's wondering that as we <laughs> we're still in the second end and everyone else is halfway through the third. Curling in the modern age. Have you ever done timing? Yes. I like it with thinking time. I find it as a 
curling fan, I find it easier to uh, watch the game yeah. <laughs> with thinking time. And I felt like before we, when we were timing run time as well, it was really a, almost a punishment to teams that played a lot of draws. It certainly was. And that's such an important part of the game, especially if you want to see um, interesting ends and closer scores. So Teresa, Teresa's playing the hit here. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no. Trying to get this by the front one. Oh, look at that. He does it. Oh. What a great shot. And that's one blue. Good enough for the single. We have a tie game here on sheet D after two. And it's, um, it's a clever pick player who will think, hey, I'll hit my own rock so I can roll to the middle. Wasn't helping her any other way, and that's it wasn't right. going to count. <laughs> but that might not uh, make it happen. to everyone, so that's neat. I'm just looking at the rest of the scores. If you haven't seen them on nscurl.com, blank in the second. Team Hilliard still trails Matatal by the single point. Brothers, McKett and Driscoll after a blank in the first. Brothers with a score of one in the second. And Jones, you already gave that update. They're playing the third. Jones up 2 nothing after a blank in the second. So we'll have a little bit of fun here in the third end. Amanda's being asked for the center guard. Team Arsenal, they'll have Hammer for the first time this game. Tied. That's why steals are so important and uh, changes the complexion of things. So if you uh, don't have Hammer and you're able to score, puts you in a better position when you do have that last rock. Whole team working on this one. And they're going to get it to center. Does the trick. They want to get that nice and tight to the rings, too. The higher up it is, the easier it is for the Arsenal team to put one a little higher in the rings. Then we can put this one in the eight foot. doesn't have to be on the button or full four. Sometimes that's a little more advantageous for the team with hammer because it leaves the four foot open, like we talked about uh, for scoring at the end. Earlier we were talking about the uh, allowable sweeping devices now, and you can see Emma Logan there throwing with the hair broom. You can still throw with the hair broom. You just can't use it for sweeping anymore. And same thing with skips. Sometimes they call with a certain broom, but you just have to call with your sweeping broom now. Yeah. You only have your throwing device. A good draw there. I would say probably a foot or two further than Emma would have wanted that, but that's being picky. curling up to the nose. Sweepers are trying to get it there for weight and gets that last bit of curl. Works out well. So we've got room to play these freezes around that center guard. trying to make that freeze. This one's curling. Sweeper's really trying to get it by the guard. Oh, just drops. Tick. Shooter didn't roll too far, so I don't know that that draw path is there. Jocelyn's going to go on the other side, the intern side.
This is a little wider than the draw to the button path, ever so slightly. We saw a curl coming the other direction. It's starting to move a little now. Maybe not enough though. Want it to be a little tighter to that guard. Yep. And they don't want the shooter to roll off, so watch and see just a little bump and <laughs> both blues will stay. Those blues are in control of that yellow rock now. Even though the yellow rock would score if the end ended now, the end's not going to end right now. <laughs> so it just clears one. Little bigger opening here for the draw, I think. Instead of playing the intern, switch into the out. I think you're right that it's bigger, but it looks smaller to me. But I sometimes <laughs> think that blue rocks look like they take up more space than the yellow rocks do. <laughs> uh, Carol's here. <laughs> Little rub on the guard. There. I find they look a little bigger on the the overhead screen. I always notice that the dark colored rocks, yep. so they don't fade as much into the background. We promise they're all the same size, approximately. approximately. So that one wrecking on the wide one—that's the straighter side for these draws. And we saw that. Uh, the last time we were going this way in the first end. A couple rocks we thought would come up over there didn't. So Marianne's asking for a run. Or no, right through the hole. And if you miss the hole, open it up. Yep. Could be a great result. But it looks just wide enough for a stone to fit through there. I think that's through. Hanging straight and shooter, unfortunately, will stay there. They would have loved to squiggle that one through. Squiggle's the word for it, too, isn't it? Yeah, kind of ricochets off both guards and keeps on going. Shoots through. Lots of momentum. Yeah. So, Team Breen, relatively uncomplicated. Just uh, continue putting one on the center line in front of the T line. Higher in the rings is probably better at this point. We're on to Mate Stones. Marley Power is throwing. An update from Sheep B. Hilliard has scored two, making the score 2 1 for Hilliard after three. And we, they're playing um, Mary Matatal, but Mary Matatal is not here. She happens to be coaching Taylor Stevens at the Junior Nationals in Langley right now. So picked up an okay spare, Colleen Pinckney. <laughs> not too shabby. She'll do in a pinch. That's a Merlot? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Thanks. Much better? Yes. Much. <laughs> okay. Back on our sheet, the uh, blue stone Marley threw didn't quite make it to the ring. She's come up a little light on her draws. At least I've noticed the past couple ends. Still guards that center line. So Christina throwing the draw here. They wanted to overlap that though. If uh, might have left a hit here, and that stone ended up. Don't know if Marley can see a lot of this from the hack. Might have to play it with a soft hit weight board or hack. Hacks what Teresa's asking for. 
pretty quick too. She knows what she wants here. Sleepers call them board weight. Remember this on the draws was hanging straight, but they're closer to center line. Some of those hits were curling, and this one is curling. We lost that. You're always a little hesitant to sweep when the weight's up. Sweepers were saying it's board. Uh, an update in the brothers McKett and Driscoll game. McKett and Driscoll scored one in the last end, making the score one all after three ends. Did you see that draw? It was a tough draw. Mary was throwing against three or four brothers' stones and made it to the forefoot. Clutch. <laughs> Sweepers end to end. <laughs> Pretty intense <laughs> for the single. Jones stole one in the third against McAvoy. So they'll lead 3 nothing. Here's another stone getting lobbed into that forefoot, that button area. Arsenault with hammer. There's only one blue stone in there. Three of Arsenault's yellows. Although that little chip, the blue stone might be a shot or second now. It's a lonely blue though. That stone is lonely smurf, if it was a smurf. So Teresa can see she has that same hit now that the guards moved over. Probably stick her shooter around somewhere in the rings, although you don't want to set up a double on the two blues, so rolling a little broom side might not be the best result. Even nose probably leaves a double on the blues, so I'd probably roll this over to the wings. See if Teresa can remove both those yellows. And this one is curling as well. Didn't want to wick that top one. Didn't remove any of the yellows. Certainly changed Blue. the scenery, though. Blue is still shot. Shooter rolled out. If Marion can ever get to that shot stone. Looking at it probably jamming on that back yellow, but I think she's got to go for it, try and move it, even if she sticks her shooter and pops that out in the open. It's risky times for Team Breen. So it'll be a soft weight hit. You would never play a lot of weight at this and risk missing everything. Worst case, you tick the guard over. And Teresa's guarding for her life or hitting to sit two. I've seen a lot of hits move in that spot there, so I'm hopeful for her. Yeah, it's been interesting. We keep saying those draws aren't crossing the center line. So the draws are starting, um, you're aiming over into the 8 foot and 12 foot, and so they're, it's, it's at the finish that they're not taking that curl, but it seems to me the hits which are thrown around that center line are catching and moving. This is likely a setup shot. They can't remove this blue stone. Trying to keep this high, the center line. And now trying to get to the move. curl. Don't want to just chip it sideways. Oh, makes a little contact. Pops the blue out. 
And the yellow Almost in the open. Problem is that yellow shooter's now uh, probably a catcher. Just didn't come up enough for her. That's a little more weight than I thought Marion would throw on that. I agree. Probably control. Wonder if you see a lot of rocks crashing on the front, you up the weight a little bit. Yeah. I think it's the natural reaction. A little harder, a little straighter. So an intern come around here for Teresa. Probably trying to stagger these blue rocks a little bit. You've got the center guard and the one in the side four foot. And probably trying to put this, maybe just biting top four and leaving a piece of each open. I saw them earlier looking at coming from the other direction. Um, perhaps a draw on top of that yellow one. Yeah, that still leaves the opening for Marianne to score. So this is uh, going back to a more aggressive call. But good chance to force Marianne to draw for a single. This is made. Oh. I'm going back to the other side. <laughs> You can't wick the guard on either draw. Well, on this draw, you could wick the guard, I suppose. That might be the reasoning here. Yeah. And compared to ice that we've seen her give traveling in a similar path to a similar destination, uh, I felt like she was giving a lot more ice for that. Uh, but this, she could afford to be a little deeper, so she can take a little less ice. Yeah, heavy's, heavy's OK here, I suppose. I don't really want to bank on that. No. Stay tuned to see what happens. So Teresa's last shot, Marianne with one to come. been a tense end with lots of stones around the forefoot and, and just now are they a little more separated. Jocelyn and Amanda were working on that right away the whole way. I want to get this at least closer than the other two yellows and then I'll stop top 12. Do you think that takes the button away? Might take the draw. Sorry, I have a, <laughs> a tickle in my throat. <laughs> Trying not to cough in everybody's ears here. Why did the call end up being Denise? <laughs> um, I say a light hit or a heavy draw. Trying to move that blue one out of the way there. So I think they can get around the guard enough to get to nose. Yeah. I think it's worth it for. Yeah, it's not a B huge for four. Because if they don't make it, then they're giving up one, which they're doing anyway. But if they do make it, like you said, big payout. Starting to curl now. And they get it by. It's by. It's by. Enough weight. Oh, what a shot. B E aggressive. For four. Great team shot there from the entire Arsenault team to score four in the third end here. They'll take a five to one lead over Teresa Breen. Love seeing those smiles out there. 
And you see, that's why when um, Teresa was throwing, of course, trying to have hers be in that four foot area, it was fifth shot and uh, it's out counted by those yellows on the side 12. Two little team meetings down there before we roll into the fourth end. So for Team Arsenal, there was a bit of a, after Marianne's first, uh, didn't necessarily look so good, but made a great shot on her last. And for Team Breen, they're regrouping. They have Hammer. Get some rocks in play. Seemingly came out of nowhere. Normally when we see rocks all clustered around the uh, button, there's a very low to no score. Yeah. But in this case, things got opened up and there were enough yellow stones around the edge that made it happen. can hear the familiar voice of Colleen Jones calling line out there. She just made a nice takeout to sit three. And leading by three doesn't look like Team McAvoy has a lot going for them. They do have a corner guard though. This one from Emma coming a bit deep. Back 12. So we'll see the corner guard go up. Not a panic from Team Breen, but uh, that score four is a bit striking on the board. We've got scores of one and two in the rest of the games. Threes have been happening more and more with the five rock rule. We haven't talked about that yet, but can't remove. Ooh. Your, uh, your opponent's stone Sorry in the guard that. zone until after uh, after the fifth. Oh, they got to get this one over. Everybody's part of it. Yeah, I love the five rock rule. Makes, makes the game more interesting. I mean, it's exciting to throw hits and it's fun to watch them move. But if there's nothing to hit, the game gets boring pretty quick. We like rocks in play. That's right. So this one's looking good, right to the lid, the lid, the button lid. Oh. <laughs> that modern slang. You have any good <coughs> puns about the button? No, I was going to say something about a turkey there, but <laughs> it's been done. <laughs> All right, so let's get this corner guard back in play. So this is where the five rock rule comes into play. In uh, the four rock rule, this guard wouldn't be able, or sorry, would be able to be hit by Team Arsenal if it was a guard. They're waiting to see if it stops. Ooh, metal. That one's available. So if that were a guard, Marion couldn't ask Jen to hit it. But since it is, she can. I suppose she could ask her to hit it. It would just get put back. <laughs> She's not allowed to remove it. Well, that's too bad. Amanda's first one coming up so light. You add a little bit, it's just too much. And a nice pretty roll. good roll there. Anywhere in is great, of course, but uh, you want to keep it closer to that center line. Keep all the play around center.
We can't really ignore the stones in the rings right now. You got to make a play on them so we won't have guards in this case. I want to keep the shooter around though. It's really important on these shots. It's rock maneuvering. Try and keep the shooter around so you see the forefoot's opening up now. And to keep the shooter around, often you have to throw a controlled or a control weight. It's tempting, uh, I'm talking to the club curlers again, to throw big smashes, but it gets rid of rocks. But it <laughs> Just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's right. Even that, just a nice easy weight from Jen. Shooter sticks around. You can control those a lot more with sweeping. Yep. And that's if what you can makes th it throw a missile with accuracy, it can be useful, but often not. <laughs> yeah. Missile's not always the right tool. And being able to control things with sweeping is what makes it a team game and not, not an individual sport. So just trying to get a roll here. Try and get any protection. That one really took off on the team. Marley wasn't expecting that one to, uh, she wasn't expecting to have to sweep that, although it ends up a little bit in front of that yellow. Christina probably will just uh, peel this out, roll out. She can get it and stick around, but her shooter will be behind the T-line. So Team Breen just cleaned things up. They're probably looking for a blank here. No guards in play, not a great chance to score a couple. Of course, if they get that chance, they'll be all over it, but just keep it open here for now. Trying to roll the shooter in front of that yellow stone so a nose hit would jam. Maybe get a roll out. It's okay. enough uh, separation that I think Christina can stick the shooter. So again, that nice easy weight, just keeping it high side. Just oh, touch the back one. Marion didn't seem too worried about that. <laughs> Christina no. was called in line. Got away with it. Again, want to stick the shooter. Wanted to keep that close to the nose instead of over on the side. Marianne can keep her shooter in. As long as there's two yellow stones in the rings, it's a force for Team Breen. It's not what they want. So anywhere high side will do the trick, but they'll want to stick the shooter on this one. It tends to be uh, a little curlier from the inside to the outside, or from the center to the out, um, and a little straighter from the outside of the rings to the inside of the rings. Why do you suppose she went from the center out? 
Um, so it's normally to do, you can hit it a bit thicker and still get a roll um, when you play it that way. If you play it outside in, it runs straight, you risk the jam. So a safer way to play that shot. You wanted to roll toward the center line. And uh, when you're playing inside out, you get a little more spin, a little more action. After the stones make contact, so the shooter will roll a bit further, even if you hit the stone thicker. Some people just like throwing inside out. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> there is a certain. It's the amount. same as throwing the other way. You just put a different turn on the rock, but there, it feels different, and everyone. Uh, New curlers especially, you've yeah. probably seen that. You kind of direct the rock and really get over curl. And they don't want get to get away from that safety center line. This is curling. And Jocelyn, keep it enough to stick around. Will it be second? Yeah, rolling big time, but... Yeah. Still hanging around there, though. But if Marianne can hit this on the nose... Probably not going to be a blank for Team Breen. Uh, an update on Sheet E in Jones versus McAvoy. McAvoy has scored in the fourth end, one point, making the score three to one for Jones. So here's the hit, same path as she just threw. Has to curl a little more, but it is moving nicely to the wings. And it looks like there won't be a chance for a blank for Teresa. I don't think you can make both those yellows go and stick your, or roll your shooter out, so this will be a hit for one. While Teresa's moving there, we also have an update on Sheet C in McKett and Driscoll versus Brothers. McKett and Driscoll scored one point in the fourth end, making the score two to one for McKett and Driscoll. Did I say McKett and Driscoll enough times there? <laughs> it was interesting. It was all brothers that end. I took a look down and... They were all T-line or passed, and Mary McKett and Driscoll made a very nice raise, and that was the steal point. Raise to the forefoot. So when you ask about the stones hanging yeah. around the back of the four, yep. that's what happens. Don't want to roll out on this. Have to stick around for the single, and that'll be fine. Good sweep from Jocelyn Adams to keep that straight and good enough for the single for Team Breen. So after four, Arsenal will lead five to two and they will take Hammer into the fifth end. Uh, and the only <coughs> sheet that we don't have an update on is Hilliard and Matatal, who blanked the fourth end. The score remains two to one for Hilliard. And if you caught us partway through the broadcast and you don't know what you're watching, I'd be shocked, but it is the Nova Scotia Provincial Women's Curling Championships, the 2020 Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Draw one of a seven draw round robin leading to the semis and finals on the weekend to find out who will represent Nova Scotia at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts next month in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. They like to dress up there in Saskatchewan. They have a lot of green anytime I've ever <laughs> been to a national curling event. I went to school out there and you know here if you go to the mall most people are wearing you know blue and black. It's green everywhere there. Even yeah. in the winter. Green. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah. They got their riders and the, yes, uh, the Rough Riders, certainly there's a lot of paraphernalia. And the colors at the University of Saskatchewan are also green and white, but they're Huskies too, just like St. Mary's. I think they've just made excellent choices <laughs> <laughs> regarding their sports teams so that they're all coordinated. It's 
It's a budget budget saver. <laughs> yeah, you can use the same thing for football and curling. That's right. And everything else. I, I think you summed it up in terms of sports out there. <laughs> they probably play hockey. Oh, yeah. Good point. So that come around from Emma just ticks the guard. Good result though. You never want to sail that through the rings. You'd love to tick the guard. So a little bit of work to do for Team Breen. They're still down three points without Hammer. They need these guards. But in that long 10 end game, you have a little bit of a better chance of scrapping your way back into it. Need this one to curl to center. It's going a little deep in the guard zone, so later when the guards can be hit, that looks pretty juicy for a double peel. And just to come around, nothing too complicated. I didn't notice before um, that Marianne uses her uh, her glove for sweeping. She's got red and green. Sweep and stop. Well, that's a good idea. It gets so loud out there sometimes. I had the opportunity to play with a hearing impaired skip for a couple of years and we had all kinds of awesome hand signals and it was a really, really interesting experience. I think it's good for everybody. I, uh, our, my team uses it quite a bit. Uh, we don't use colors, but we'll use other motions. The sweepers are always looking up because uh, they, f I don't know if it's my voice blends in with everybody else or they just like ignoring me, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll be like saying, yeah, you got to sweep, and they're just, <laughs> they're not sweeping, so we have other ways to communicate besides yelling. Then there's no excuse. So Jocelyn's looking for this come around. This is that tough spot to play the come around though. Intern side's not there. This one a little heavy. Makes it to the back eight foot though, but uh, Marianne not gonna mess around. So and another call draw deal. staying kind of straight in that same spot we've been seeing all game. Yeah, I'd like to see the intern side used. It's just the guards in the way. Yeah, probably won't be there for much longer. Jen Baxter's gonna make those move. Ooh, shooter stays out there, just misses. That's another hit that's over curled. So we keep talking about the draws staying straight there and the hits around that center line curling. But they are traveling on two uh, different pieces of ice. It seems like it should be the same it's on the same side of the sheet, but it is a different path. Uh, totally different path. You see that all the time where a hit will take a totally different track than the draw will, because it grabs the ice at different spots. On uh, sheet B in Hilliard versus Matatal, they've gone into the fifth end, tied with Matatal scoring one point in five. Sorry, when I said the fifth end there, I'm at the fifth end break. Tied. <laughs> Half time. So here's the guard for Team Breen. Just the one blue stone in the rings, and Arsenal will just be hammering at the front to clear things. Might be able to get everything moving here. Marianne's indicating. Jen can throw the weight. This is one of those ones where we talk about being able to throw those bullets. Well, you might want to do it here with accuracy. And yeah, Jen can move it. But if you uh, if you throw this off and you hit on the nose, it doesn't do a lot. So you got to hit at an angle. This one's looking good. Blue first. 
even squirted that yellow into the rings. Really good result. So instead of three guards, there's just the one. It's a whole different scene down there now. Teresa is probably not going to want to ignore that yellow in the top 12 foot. Well, it certainly seems to have her attention. We're probably talking about a hit and roll under ever so slightly, but that brings play into the rings or another guard. And there's the there's the indication for the guard. She's probably banking on Marion not tapping that yellow up, and that's the reason for this guard call. Uh, the guard is the more aggressive play there, right? Yep. So usually you would think if you throw it harder, like a hit, that that would be aggression. But in this case, the more delicate shot is the more aggressive play. Yeah, the one that keeps stones in play, keeps your rock protected. This one looks like it might be a little deep for a guard, though. You might Marley get something was, out of it, though. She was a little heavy on her draws earlier. Or, sorry, light on her draws earlier. Seems to have adjusted that one. A little too heavy, though. It's those blues grouped together. It's hard not to overcompensate for if that's in your head. Marion might still go for those guards because they are pretty dangerous. They're overlapped. They're uh, not easy to remove both of them in one shot. You might want to give yourself a bit more time to get at that situation. It's a really aggressive call here. Tap looks so obvious and beautiful, but if you hang it high and there's ways that you can uh, give an opening to Team Breen, it's one they're worried about over curling now. The alignment of those guards isn't real great Light. for Team Green there. Team Breen there, for in terms of tapping, because if they were to tap, they would be headed sort of to the eight foot instead of to the to the center. It's almost better that it was light since it over curled there. Yeah. But again, Team Breen saying, all right, it's a little complicated out there. Put a guard. Oh. And then switch into the draw. <laughs> you know, what they don't like is uh, the forefoot's open. Yeah. I like the guard here. I think Arsenal just played the tap. <laughs> She's probably going to do it again. Yeah. So she's got that broom just inside the eight foot there. In this funny path we've been talking about, let's see where that ends up. Yeah, it's probably the right ice and adjustment. This used to be where they were putting it for draw to the button, but finding they were hanging straight. And they've got their sweepers working to move the rock sideways. So they don't want this one too deep. They don't want to line up any kind of a tap. I think they have to be pretty happy with that result. Does the trick. Is there any kind of a chip on that yellow? Ooh, it's tough. There's a lot of stuff up there. I think for Team Arsenal, when they played that tap on the last shot, they kind of committed to playing into this end, so that's why it's tough now. Those three blues out front, they're almost committed to playing into the rings at this point. Yeah. Probably not going to be able to remove everything out front. It's still okay if you can promote this into the forefoot because it's fully open with just the blue at the back eight. <laughs> this one hanging, starting to curl now. Will Christina get any contact? Oh, Ooh, it little. does. Shooter rolls out. Might not be there anymore. That's a toughie now. So here's the chance for Team Breen to make that draw. While Teresa's is traveling here, we'll update you on McKitt and Driscoll versus Brothers. Brothers scored one in the fifth end, making it tied two all. And they're in their break now.
So here is the draw. Teresa wants this to be in the top four foot. Doesn't want to be behind the tee. I think Marianne would then follow her down. This one's curling. Yeah, it's moving. We've seen this path curl. This is all over the front. It sure is. What do you think about the weight there? Oh. It looked well, like the weight was okay. It just moved a ton. Yeah, I mean, sweepers run it the whole way, so it probably was minimum weight. Um, the only good thing that happened there is the shooter rolled open so it can be raised. And it blocked that in-turn draw path for Marianne. So she's kind of forced to go to this out-turn side. It's really hard to get into that four-foot area. Especially since this is the spot that we've seen run straight the whole day. I guess they'll have to go out a little further. Or, but they've got the broom in the same place. <laughs> I'll just keep saying that. I don't know if it's enough ice for the straight draw, so maybe just a little tap, but I just don't know if you can get around that guard with any weight and actually tap that properly. From where I'm sitting, that yellow rock looks dead behind the blue guard. But I'm a little to the left of the situation, so it could be poking out a little bit. So we think it's a tap. A little less weight probably than Christina threw. Christina's was about hack. Line's looking better on this one. It's taking the curl. I have to tap this to the forefoot. Does it have enough? just chips it sideways. Draw path might be open now though, believe it or not. It's a tight port. They still have that long tap on the other side too. Long taps there. I actually think that might be the better chance to uh, to steal. Yeah. Not looking for the force here, Team Breen. They, they really would like to steal. Get within two. Teresa's saying, all right, Marianne, you can tap your own or try that draw, but she's going to try and sit two here. So this will be an adjustment from her previous draw. A little bit, a little more ice, I think a touch more. They were into the eight foot in the last, and it wasn't enough, but this will have a bit more weight on it. I'm making contact with that blue stone in the tight guard area. Here's the tap attempt. I'm going to watch the line. It really will take off. There it goes. Almost getting to nose on this. Is it enough to get to sit two? Sure is. I'll grab a piece of the button, back button. Good enough to sit two. Nothing on that intern side of the sheet for Marianne. I don't think Teresa even left a hole there. So. Marion's going to have to, I think, draw through this little port that she's left herself or else run her own. She could slash her own back into it, which might not be the end of the world. Maybe just give up a single that way. There's no, uh, no tap on the original yellow, but perhaps on the one she threw or just draw through that port, I think, is ultimately what they got to go for here. Yep. Up three points, they've got the benefit of, you know, it's not the end of the world if there's a steal here. 
That's why I like the slash. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you only give up one. So it's been a very interesting end. Up three with Hammer, and it was that one change instead of playing appeal, going aggressive, a little miss there. Tough shot here for the single. Facing two, Marianne Arsenal. See if she can navigate the port. Needs the button. First is to get through the port. Jen Baxter. Ooh. Just wicks. Where will the shooter go? Like Still too, too heavy. So that over curled and was heavy. Steal of two. Big change here in this game after five. Arsenal will still lead five to four. And we will get back to you in about five minutes after the break.
that would be interesting. Actually, we're, I'm looking for grants to be able to buy. We're looking into to see if there's a Bluetooth device that the whole team can use, so she can hear all the conversations. But we don't know if that is available. Right. Interesting, eh? Yeah, it'd have to be a form. I mean, there are things. I have a Bluetooth for my um, motorcycle, and I have one that only ever connects. It's like intercom, it only connects to yeah. one, but there are devices that everyone is connected. Right. We are back here at the Dartmouth Curling Club in the 2020 Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Sheet D featuring Team Breen and Team Arsenault. 5-4 game, Arsenault leading with Hammer. By a single point, I'm Selena Thompson, joined by Denise Nicholson. How are you enjoying the game so far, Denise? Cool, pretty good. It's interesting. Lots of rocks in play. That's what we like to see. Yes, there's always lots to talk about when there's rocks in play, yep. provided they're different colors. Yes. Team Breen out of the Halifax Curling Club, Amanda England, Jocelyn Adams, Marley Powers, Teresa Breen, Breen, I think I would get that right by now. Fifth, Mary Sue Radford, they are coached by Jeff Wilson. Team Arsenault, Emma Logan, Jen Baxter, Christina Black, Marianne Arsenault. Fifth, Kristen Clark, Coach Stu McLean. Guess I should call him by his actual name, Stuart, but everyone calls him Stu. And we've had lots to talk about, like Denise said. Big four in the third for the Arsenal rink. And successfully forced Breen to a single in the fourth, but a very complicated fifth end. Ended up in a steal of two for Team Breen, so they trail by the single. And looks like we'll have another exciting end <laughs> set up here. Center guard for Team Breen. Come around just back button for Team Arsenal. And did Teresa call? I didn't see the a high guard. I didn't see. I was watching the sweeping on C. <laughs> There's other exciting games going on. Lots of games. We will keep you updated on those two. Hilliard versus Matatal. McKett and Driscoll and Brothers. And Jones and McAvoy. And you can see the scores on nscurl.com. Everybody's playing the sixth end right now. So that was the draw call. Freeze. Good chance to call a second guard there. Just one guard in play is going to favor the Arsenal rink with Hammer. Six end, I think they'd like to score here. See both teams going pretty hard for that. Maybe Team Breen, intense fifth end. Might uh, want to try and force a blank out of this. Can't imagine though, they're down one without. They need to get points. Need somebody to score so they can get hammer back. Christina Black working hard to keep it straight there. And, and they managed to squeak by that front one. Great shot there. Yellow just biting top button. No hesitation on Teresa's part. Nope, she wants to get it complicated around that center. Like we said earlier, normally when things get really complicated and nothing's blasted out, you end up with a limited score. This one's a little hard. heavy though. Not going to do much for the Breen team. I don't think that one will probably come into play other than if we're looking at a blank. But here's an awesome chance for Jen Baxter to plant one right on top of everything in the forefoot.
got a half track in there, one five knots. She's over cold over the place. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's much better. This one is curling. A little light. It's not going to get by the guard. They worked hard the whole way to keep that straight, but just light. Yep. Teresa looking to see who shot there, but uh, I think eventually it might not matter that much that yellow is just in such a good spot. Yeah. They have to get another stone in the rings. Yellow-blue out in front can be run back as well. I think there's about to be a measure over on B. I think that's for the third point. It's a nice freeze from Colleen Pinkney to try and get her team out of trouble. And then a nice hit from Tanya Hilliard. I think they got at least two. It's a tie game right now, but it won't be in a second. There's a nice draw from Jocelyn Adams. Here we'll see the run. A couple options here. I think they're going to play it onto the one in the top eight, but... If it over curls and goes into the one in the forefoot, not the end of the world. The blue will get cleared out of the back and probably keep the three yellows. Three yellows is very appealing if you're yellow. <laughs> you usually like it when it's your stones in the rings. This one to come up to make contact with anything. Get the blue, but that was probably not the result they were looking back. for. Yeah, now blue is definitely shot stone back button. Yeah, blue is one and three, and yellow is. But nope, blue is one and four, and yellow is two, three, and five. So team Breen again, just keep things complicated. They have to be aware. There's the yellow at the uh, top 12 foot. Can't really ignore those yellows. It can build up around the edge. That's how that score of four came about in the third end. They won't forget that soon. I <laughs> those ones were all around the four foot too and they got spread out and turned into counters. Yep. That measure on B was in favor of yellow, which is mad at all. So we're going to call it a score of two. Same situation again. Just leave another one around the center line. This is one of those ends that could go either way at this point. Each team is waiting for the other one to blink. This one has to curl, get to center line. Doesn't have a lot of gas left in it. Can they get it there? Oh, sweepers worked so hard on that. It's nice when you uh, work really hard to get a rock to curl and it actually makes it there. Nothing yeah. more frustrating than sweeping end to end and having a hogged rock or <laughs> just come up end, light. <laughs> end to end and not making it to the other end.
We're looking to get some rocks moving here for Christina Black. And make contact with both guards. Great shot. So we have to be a little more careful for Team Breen here. They've got to guard the Yellowstone. So this one will need to split center. Maybe stay a little bit on the broom side just to uh, keep that blue slightly protected as well. Marianne has a couple ways to get at that blue shot stone at this point. And she's saving a real thin in off for the end. We might get to see. <laughs> Super's calling a two, which is good weight for a guard, although it fairly looks like it'll get there. It has to curl, though got to keep this moving. They want this to be tighter to the rings. This one's going to be a high guard. Can't leave that yellow open. Is there enough? Can Marianne see enough? Gonna go for it, even if it just moves the blue a hair. It's a good result. Yep. Got two yellows in the forefoot area, and this will be the third. That guard's just too high. Didn't finish enough. So with stones left to play, even though that blue rock is shot, you'd almost rather be in possession of that yellow rock because it can make things happen, and the blue rock is kind of. It's stranded. Yeah. <laughs> it's not helping Team Breen other than the fact that it counts at this point. Yeah. But we don't take the score until all the rocks have been thrown. So go in the other direction with the outturn. This is the one that the hits curled. There we see this one moving. Once it's by the guard, they can let it go. Now they just want to make as much contact with the blue as they can. Try not go off that back one too much, but the blue pops open. Worked out quite well. I'm not super worried about sitting three, but uh, having a couple in there is good. Teresa's got a tough one here. She's got a roll, might not be able to roll for shot. She's not going to be able to do anything about that yellow at the top button. And in order to make this roll that they're talking about, knowingly going to jam this yellow rock onto the blue at the back eight. So it really matters that the shooter sticks around here. So Teresa really has to play this. I don't think she has anything else. There's an in-off off the yellow, but you're hitting fifth shot. <laughs> or sixth, so yeah, that's well, a, a hard one to argue for. There's a lot of rocks in there, and a lot of them are yellow. So I think Teresa's going to be throwing quite a bit of weight on this, trying to get pretty flat in order to get shot out of this. So earlier when we were talking about coming from the inside out for uh, <laughs> that steeper roll, this is yeah. the opposite. This one's curling. They do have a catcher, but it's their own. 
Gets shot out of it. Good hustle there by Amanda England going end to end on that one. So they wanted to, uh, I think that actually went a little too much into the side. They wanted to go a little bit under the yellow. Yeah. Believe it or not, too flat. I think uh, they thought it had to be flatter than it was. And looking at the overhead, I thought it was pretty flat as well. But you can see what it leaves Marianne, which is a fairly straightforward hit, although with soft weight because there's a guard involved. But this is for two. The last rock, six end, Marianne Arsenault. Soft weight, hit for two. Come on. No, she's not. No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> this one will just come up to no. It's well managed. Yeah. And score of two. Rebound from... Uh, from that fifth end, they won't be too happy about, but now we'll take a seven to four lead over Team Breen. Breen will have Hammer in the seventh. Oh, indeed, Julie McAvoy just made a nice draw against two, uh, making the score on that sheet. Uh, four points for Jones and two for McAvoy after six ends. And I see another super spare in there for Team McAvoy. Shelly Barker is missing, but Jocelyn Nix is in. And I don't think we've updated C, where McKett and Dreskel is up three to two versus Brothers, also after six ends. Some tight games here out on uh, draw one of the provincials. That's what you like to see. Although I suppose if you were one of the teams, you'd like to see more <laughs> space. Yeah, fans of any given team want to see a lopsided score. But yeah. uh, fan, fan people like us, <laughs> people yeah. like us are thrilled that they're tight. Yeah. You can see uh, Christina really working on that one there. Right on the center line. Possibly a little higher than they would have liked. Yeah, I think with a lead of three, I mean, Team Breen's probably going to be trying to score here. You could have could have put that one in the rings, and we might have seen the corner guard come up. I don't think Breen would wait till the eighth and try and score. I find it interesting. Teams like to try and force by playing that center guard, but uh, I like kind of playing, if you can afford to, play it into the rings and try and get that nice top four, top eight foot rock, and you can play the guard on your next one. Some is being asked for a hack waiter here. A little bit of that blue available. And that's partly because of how high that yellow rock is. That you have a chance of getting to that blue one. <laughs> this is another hit that's curling really hard at the guard. Might leave a corner guard for Team Breen, though, with that. Which it will. They want to get that raised one into the rings. I'm sure making sure Christina gets her chance to sweep when it's her turn. <laughs> Just keeping her warm. That's very considerate. <laughs> Are using. 
So fairly open house for Team Breen with um, them not playing the corner guard and playing the come around on Amanda's first. It looked like they're happy to keep things open, but now that we see a corner guard in play with that tick on the guard, we see them go a little harder for a couple points here. Nice draw there from Amanda. And it's nice to see them using the other turn instead of us seeing that straight draw for that place where the draws were running straight yeah, all the time. Yeah, the inside out. I'm a little surprised the sweepers took that as deep as they did. It looks good from behind the sheet, but the overhead, it's a little deeper than the shot stone. So Jen may have a double here. But these are... Uh, Christina's holding it, though. Might get the double. Nice shot. Well done by all team members there. And that was probably the most weight we've seen in that path. It's the only one that's held. Or the only one I remember that's held. Probably probably another one hasn't overcurled, but I don't remember it. Me neither. A little soft weight here for Jocelyn Adams. Still have the guard in play. So important for Team Breen here. Keep the shooter in play. Keep it in the rings. Keep Team Arsenal away from the corner guard if you want to get your chance for a few. Waiting for this one to take off. Oh, there it goes. Gone now. That uh, that almost looked like it picked. It curled so hard. That was a squeaker. Sweepers did not expect that. No. Almost wrecked. Yep. Unbelievable. The draws didn't curl that much, so I think something must happen to that rock. Gets by the guard, no problem. Shooter will probably roll out, though. The corner guard's still there for Team Breen. Super's going for weight on this one. Yeah. It's really Not moving. for line. No. That's not exactly what they wanted, but it's not in a terrible place. I mean, they can't use it right now because of that long guard, but maybe in the future. Yeah, it's a splittable. Well, I don't know if it's splittable. It's a little far from the rings. Yeah. Team Arsenal, they're not going to peel. They're directing play to the other side of the sheet, the open side. Try and get Team Breen to ignore those guards, not use them. They could peel, but by peeling, they're probably going to concede a deuce. Don't really want to do that. They'd love to get a force here. That's well done to the side. Team Breen's not going to play ball with that. Just playing that come around so they see their opportunity with corner guards. Trying to get the points generated here. Don't generate points by playing open. They're all really working on getting this one going. That's two in a row. Marley just coming up light. <coughs> Disappointed with that. I don't uh, don't know how usable those are anymore. Team Arsenal now trying to choke off that side of the sheet. So this is the play for the force. Separate the yellow stones. The risk here is going deep, leaving an out for 
Team Bream. Well, we had our weight on this one, but they were trying to manage the curl right off the hop there. Yeah, they didn't want to be on the guard, so uh, no. they want to stay above the tee here. So Sweeper's just not taking it deep right on the tee line. Yeah. I think we talked about it earlier, but the the um, the format of this tournament is around Robin. So there's eight teams, two qualified by virtue of CTRS points, the top two in the province. That was Jill Brothers and Tanya Hilliard. They received automatic berths to the provincials. The remaining teams played off in Berwick in early December for the six remaining spots. So that completed the field here. And they all play each other once. Oh, I was going to ask how you earned CTRS points. Playing in Bond Spiels in uh, World Curling Tour events where points are allocated. You can play in any Bond Spiels, but certain ones, depending on the um, the teams that are playing, will be allocated CTRS points for uh, making playoffs. And of course, first place garners the most. There's only so many weekends in a season before. <laughs> Before it's, they start counting it's those true, points. yeah. I think they go over, um, don't quote me on this, I think it's over a two year oh, okay. period. And it carries with the player, so if the team changes, the player would take their proportion of the points earned in that season with them to their new team. Oh, that's very fair. Yeah, it's a nice way to do it, and so um, teams realize that they are rewarded just not only by experience and practice playing in those bonds wheels, but also with a birth to provincials if you have the higher number of points. And there's a certain uh, reward for sticking with your team as well. For like those points that you've earned as a group, you keep as a group. Yeah, exactly. But you're not penalized if you leave as well. You get to carry your points with you. Exactly. I like that. And then Wednesdays in the morning, nine and You'll often see, especially with the teams playing um, in cash, the, the large cash deals for huge amounts of money. Um, there's that Olympic cycle that we see. So they put a team together and try and make a go at it for something in the area of four years. Yeah. Maybe a player change along the way. We see that a little bit less in Nova Scotia, where we don't have... Uh, as many teams at the top end of those points, but uh, we got a few teams in both the men's and women's sitting in decent spots in those CTRS rankings. I think you do see teams uh, sort of forming and breaking apart on that same or a similar four-year cycle, though. Yep. That's when other players become available, too. That's right. <laughs> and there's uh, new residency rules this year. Or maybe it was last year. So conceivably, a person living in Nova Scotia could play for Alberta. Yeah, the birthright rule. So there was, you, you used to be allowed to have your one player, your import, who didn't have to live in the province you played out of for Briar and Scotties. Of course, for any other tournaments, it doesn't matter. Yep. <laughs> but those are the ones that teams form for. You don't switch teams for different tournaments, usually. No, we're kind so of... So you have your import, and then depending on school and... Um, some players who are in school can designate where their home province is to suit their curling team, and then you have the birthright rule, so you're allowed to play for the province you were born in. And that's new this year. I think that rule in particular is going to do favors for small provinces like Nova Scotia and PEI, <laughs> Newfoundland, where people are born here, learn to curl here, and then maybe move out west for work. Still have the opportunity yeah. to wear the blue and white at the at the show if they wanted. Yeah, we had one uh, a team that was traditionally known by an Ontario jacket played out of <laughs> PEI this year. Oh, really? And uh, I think they won the PEI tanker. Brian Cochran. One of our uh, Nova Scotian players was on the Scotties representative for PEI this year as well. Marie yeah, Christensen. Marie Christensen, yeah. I'm pleased for them.
Marie's father, Danny, is playing in the men's event, the Tankard here. Alan O'Leary, they were on our feature sheet earlier this afternoon in the men's draw one. They did not beat Jamie Murphy. But they'll be the first to tell you that they're a senior team. Yeah. <laughs> they happen to make the Tankard an awful lot, though. Yeah. That's they're reliable. Good to see them there. So in our game, we kind of took a little sidestep there, but uh, lots of rocks in play now. After Team Arsenault trying to the side, trying to keep things clear, but uh, we got a lot of rocks in play now after only five shots. Teresa just drew there. T-line, shot stone. Set herself up a good chance for a couple here now. Unless Marianne can get to the inside of that blue stone. I think that's about all she has here, isn't it? Yeah. Just try and draw right to the button, chip From off the inside of the blue. From here, that blue looks like it's touching the yellow, but when I look on the on the top-down view, there's quite a bit of space in between them, almost a whole stone. Certainly enough room to get the blue one out. Or possibly enough room to get the blue one out. Yeah, I don't know if she even has to remove it, though, just to get shot stone, or even if she does and delay another one in that top button area, really makes Teresa have a difficult shot for two. Yeah. I think a lot can go wrong if Marianne tries to move this far. She hits it high side, give Teresa an easy out for her single, or for her deuce, so keep it tight. You don't want to leave the bad guys an easy deuce, that's for sure. <laughs> So this is Marianne's last one to come from Teresa. It does curl here, remember, we get more curl on this side than the outturn side. You can see both Marianne's sweepers there working to make it curl. Does it have the weight? That'll just be top 12. Sweepers knew that all day. So is there room on which side for Teresa to get that two points? Looks like she's going to play the intern. Soft weight hit and roll into the button. It's kind of a thrill. Probably show. her only way to get in there. Um, on sheet B, while Teresa's traveling, in the seventh end, Manitol scored one, making score four. To three for Hilliard. shot seventh end. This is Teresa Breen looking for hit and roll in through a narrow port. They're waiting for the curl. And we've seen them really move here before. It's close. Yep, it. Just by, but will it stick around good enough for two? Wow. Oh, no, Just two, by. Yeah. Good team shot there. And so with that, 7-6. Arsenal will lead now. One point apart. Arsena will have Hammer, though, up the single in the eighth. While we're cleaning up the rocks, we'll uh, update Sheet C, where Brothers scored one in seven. Oh, nope, sorry, Brothers scored two in seven, making the score four to three for Brothers over McKetton Driscoll. I like to see those little team meetings at the end of the end so people stay connected and have a vision and a plan. It's often important to be the team that scores in the eighth end because it's likely then that you'll have the hammer in the tenth end. Right? Yep. In an eight end game, you like to take hammer in six, but in the ten end, it's really the eighth that teams focus on. I always have been thinking the past couple of years with the five rock rule in play, if you can get a three, though, 
I mean, I would take that in the nine and seven, <laughs> wherever you can take it. Anytime somebody, yeah, anytime I can get my hands on a three, I would take it for sure. Doesn't seem so bad. So we'll have to see. The stats will be a little different. Traditionally, it's been overwhelming. You know, if you have the choice to come home uh, up one without or down one with, you would try and go home down one without because the odds of scoring two are good. But it becomes a little different. We've seen a few teams. Kevin Cooey, notably, I think the, one of the first games... Uh, we saw him elect to give up a steal to go home two with Hammer. They ended up getting a three and winning. Probably a little less likely now the teams have figured out some more strategy to do with the five rock rule, but it's uh, it's changing the statistics for likelihood of winning or losing, depending on the score and who has Hammer. And for a couple of years there, those statistics we were relying on pretty heavily, like we heard them talk about it a lot on the, with the professional announcers. Yeah, it was overwhelming, and I think things are changing. And yeah. Teams, I think, are still liking to come home with hammer, but uh, it's changing a little bit of when you want to score. Sometimes you have more opportunity to score earlier, and it changes that eighth-end dynamic. Three ends to go. Team Breen down a single. They'd love to steal here. So we're seeing the two center guards. Got to get this one over. This one is grinding to a halt. Big Oof. Guys. Just makes a perfect high center guard. But you have to be dangerously close to missing <laughs> to make that shot. threw her first to the uh, side of the rings. I didn't see if Marianne called that or if it wicked off the guard. But now the tick shot is the call. She's got quite a bit of that. Hit that blue a little too hard out the side and it goes back. So this is a five rock rule in play. Great weight, just over curled. And that rock was, yeah, <laughs> it was on touching the center line <laughs> pretty solidly. <laughs> and the non-offending team gets to choose where the rock goes. Or it, it's replaced, but the non-offending team identifies where it is replaced too, right? Yeah, I feel like with the tick shot, it's a little more of an agreement between the two teams. It's not yeah. like the stone was burnt or anything like that. No. Offending is a big word when it's a tick shot. <laughs> This one's hanging wide, waiting for it to curl. There it goes. Looks but that has a long way to go to get to that center line. It's moving now, but uh, sweepers have to help it a little bit. They don't want to. They don't want to be deep. Without hammer, though, uh, pack four is not the end of the world. I think Arsenault is going to have to play on those guards. If you're if you're deep and buried, they play the hit the guard. But this one's wide open, so. Jen Baxter can actually hit this shot stone. They're trying to keep the throne stone in that four foot area. I don't mind if this just sits out on the side 12. Looks like it'll stick around. Team Arsenault has hammer here, so Team Breen can't ignore those yellows for too long. I don't mind. We're still on second stones. So they could play the draw right now. Starts to get risky if you go too much further and let those yellows collect. So 
the spot we saw a couple rocks run fairly straight with hit weight earlier in the game. We haven't seen a lot out here lately, but this one's running really straight. Watch where that shooter rolls out. Oh, Not man. what Team Breen wanted there. Now Arsenal's going to take a advantage of those guards. Interesting. They saw Team Breen not get the finish on the out turn side, so Jen's playing the in turn. Going the other direction, this was the uh, side that stayed a bit straighter, though. But we saw a few draws really curl here on this in turn coming home. This one is definitely curling. Looks to be perhaps light as well. Yeah. Can they get a biter out of this, though? Oh, and they won't. Almost. Same draw here for Marley. <laughs> it's not curling the way they want it. Yeah, this is taking the same path as Jocelyn's did, and they may just have to reassess where the broom's going. It takes a nice finish once it hits that four foot line, but it's just not crossing center. It's it has to curl too far, just not getting there. Yeah, it's hitting that four foot line too fast and too late. Another measure on B. Oh, this, this time they're using the 1.83 <laughs> meter stick. The stick for the blank looked like it ran by, so I think Hilly would blank the end. They're up one over Matatal, going into the ninth. This one is really curling for Christina on the guard. So didn't remove the guard, stays out front, blocks that raise on the yellow that's just tight. And here's the chance for Team Breen. They needed that slight miss. I think Teresa's adjusted the broom in here as well. Cooper's calling a three. That's a guard. Tight guard. Well, might be a little work. deeper than that. It's, it's difficult because uh, Super's calling three. Three is good because it means the other teams, if it's out in the open, because it means the other team, the Arsenal yellow, won't be able to hit and stay in the rings. In this case, they can make contact because that stone's not buried and keep the shooter around. That's pretty critical here. This looks pretty good from Christina. Nice double there for Christina, leaving, leaving yellow sitting two. Um, update on the Hilliard Matahal game: that uh, that six-foot measure was actually for two points. Uh, they ended up only scoring one, but still ahead. Hilliard five to Matahal's three after eight ends. So that shot was pretty important for Christina. Team Arsenault sits two. We're down to skip stones, and Teresa can't really ignore it. She draws around, and there's probably going to be a play on her own stone no matter what. So now going for the hit. She can nose this. Might be a good result. Play a tap on it on her next. <coughs>
that's gonna maybe not come up as much as they had hoped. Oh no, that worked out very nicely. Yeah, shooter rolled over a little bit. Oh, just nibbles. <laughs> yeah. A funny little spin on at the end there. Yeah, so these are the provincial rocks. They don't get used as often as club rocks, and they're, I think, retextured a little bit more often than the others as well. They have a good bite to them, so when they're going slow and they hook on something, they'll really spin. Sometimes they benefit the team, and sometimes they spin the wrong way. <laughs> So Marianne's not bothering to hit that sh stone. She knows that Teresa's going to make a play to the forefoot on her next one. She's going to try and beat Teresa to it. This is a draw. Jen Baxter's working on that one right away. Now Emma's down two. Line looks all right. They're going for weight. And now Line, can they get it by? Oh, Just. Yeah. What a super shot. Team Breen struggled with that line all end and Marianne makes the draw. What a great shot. Great sweeping too. They were on that the whole way can see how the week ends up being a long one for these players. Ten end games and Sweep two like of the days, the two draws. Yeah, so for the women, only one draw tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The men play at 9 and 7. Oh, I'd like to say if you're playing the 9 o'clock draw tomorrow morning, the club won't be open until 7.30, so <laughs> don't show up before then. I know a lot of you will be catching us while you're <coughs> at work. Popular pastime for curling fans. Curling on on every possible screen in the house. That's right. We've got two screens in our living room for exactly that reason. <laughs> the win-loss doesn't mean as much if you don't see what happens. One of the many neat things about curling is that you can, even if you don't have a favorite team, watching the game and being involved in, in the results and the goings on really is part of being part of the community, the curling community. So is Teresa just freezing here? I don't think she has much else. It's not really a draw to the button around this, just to freeze on the shot stone to force Marianne to a difficult draw for the second point. I think so. Teresa's coming back up. <laughs> She's liking this intern draw. We have seen that move nicely earlier in this end. <laughs> Teresa's team has this logo on their jerseys. I'm not going to say whose it is, but it's got a little dog tail on it. It's been killing me the whole game. <laughs> I, re I really like it. Does it make you jolly? Yeah, super jolly. <laughs> They're on TV, so <laughs> we can say Jolly Tales. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I appreciate your discretion. <laughs> Good time to mention that the players are all very thankful for their sponsors who helped them get season. Winnings don't, don't always do it. Costs money to run a team around. And like we were saying before, that's... Basically, from the time the ice goes in till now, they're on the road almost every weekend. And that doesn't happen inexpensively. 
Yeah, the unfortunate break tends to be end of December, early January, when things slow down right before provincials start. What a yeah. great draw. Super draw, super sweeping. And I don't know if there. she could have made that any better. Nope. Great job by that whole team there. All in, they've struggled to draw. All they need to do is change turns. There's no raise for Marianne. On the outturn side, she's going to have to follow her down, maybe be able to move that, but I think this is just has to be played as a draw for one. And if you get lucky, you've got the sweepers for that. Yeah, if the weight's looking good, line's looking good, then you play it. But I think you have to ice yourself for just a straight draw. Maybe a touch narrow. It's a big deal to score here for Team Arsenault. They up two and theoretically have Hammer and ten. And for Team Breen to steal would be monumental. They've trailed this game and uh, a steal would mean tie game. This is why the eighth end becomes important, you can start to see. This one's curling. Does it have the weight? And can Jen keep this straight? So close to the top one. And so that will be a steal of one for Team Breen after a nice draw from Teresa. Tie game after eight. I know you can't see, but over on B, they've got pretty much every rock in place lined up in a straight line from the butt up the center line. It's pretty interesting to look at. And there already was a timeout as well. <laughs> yeah. That's the Hilliard-Matatal game. Hilliard up two points. They're playing the ninth. But I think Matatal is in scoring position, although doesn't look good for Apple. Might have a draw for the second to the forefoot. We will let you know what happens there. So we're the last team to start the ninth end. Got a lot of rocks in play this game. Had we updated uh, on sheet E, Jones and McAvoy? Jones is up six to three after eight ends. I saw that McAvoy had a double to try and force Jones to a single or maybe even steal and just missed it. Over curled. Kim Kelly made throws for Colleen Jones, made the draw for two. Looks like it's cold out there tonight. Lots of players still have jackets and gloves on. Often this far into a game, you'd start seeing sort of t-shirts and bare hands. Maybe they're just not sweeping hard enough. Yes, but you should bring that up with them. <laughs> Armchair curling. There you go. Another time out on Sheep B with that snake of a rock pile. So Emma got around the guard. That came out fairly well in that place that we've noticed being particularly straight before. Well, it, al it almost it definitely overcurled. You could see almost the whole stone on the other side of that long blue guard. So here comes another guard. Team Breen tied. They'd love to force here and go down one like that. So we talked about down one with Hammer in the 10th. Uh, so that's the reason for this second center guard call. They don't want to necessarily go into the rings yet. They want to leave this out front mm -hmm. so it can't be removed. Meanwhile gives Arsenal the chance to put a couple in the rings. Emma's first one deep so she'll look to put this one in the top four foot. Oh, 
And we have one more update I don't think we gave you in the Brothers McKett and Driscoll game. It was a big steal of two for Brothers in that eighth end. They lead six to three. Playing nine. And Emma's got that draw weight. Just we must get that by the guard and looks <laughs> like it bites the top twelve. Wanted that to be a few feet deeper. Somewhere in between where those two stones are would be ideal positioning. Christina Black had a good close look at that one. It's hard to tell either an on the overhead shot if it's on or not. Yeah, we got to deal with shadows and obscures. Yeah, can't get right down there. <laughs> it is over buried as well, so it's not tappable, usable. So this is a draw. Jocelyn Adams. Need to get this into the forefoot, though. Do they have it? Full eight. They needed the four. So that yellow back eight foot is the shot stone, just. Marianne's coming after that most recently thrown blue stone. Yeah, just for hack weight. If it hits a guard, that's okay. Got it by. And will the shooter stick around? Yes, that's important. Very good. Like we said before, this five rock rule, a little a couple extra guards in play, and sometimes teams, like you see Breen, they have to go really hard here. Or they are going hard for the force, or maybe a steal, but you see our snow, yellows, back eight, side 12, those can come into play. And we saw that in uh, three, where there were a lot of sort of scattered stones around the back, and all of a sudden they mattered a lot with Arsenal picking up four points there. Game on here for us. No, it doesn't look like they're uh, eyeing a blank at all. Every time you put a rock in play, it's one more that has to be removed. If a blank's going to happen, so I think we're going to have a score here. That's my prediction. <laughs> Little team meeting there. Looking back towards the glass. Let's call the timeout <laughs> to allow the coach to come out. They're usually pretty happy to do this on their own. We're up here with the coach. Does he want to go out? <laughs> they do have to ask. The coach can time out. The rule is the same in juniors, actually, but the coaches tend to make a bigger fuss behind the glass if they want the team to call the timeout. Don't see that quite as often in women's play. There it is. Timeout. So Stuart McLean will have a chance to go down and chat and tell them everything we've been saying. <laughs> oh, handshakes on C. So it must have been another steal in the ninth there for Brothers to get those handshakes. We'll see the final if they post the score, which they won't. <coughs> or do it. They when never post the score. When you're out there, you don't <laughs> think to do it. But when you're in here, it's... It's torture. <laughs> Very frustrating. Well, we'll call it a win for Jill Brothers over Mary McKett and Driscoll. Yeah, that's like an eight. So Stuart will go down to the other end, just chat with the team, gives them a bit of time to settle and say, what's our plan for the end? What are we doing here? They're still working on an absolute beachhead of rocks over there on B. So far this end, they've played into it, so they've been looking like they want to score. So the draw would be consistent with that. Um, my f worry is that they close down their scoring area and get forced to a single, and thats I don't think that that's what they want to have happen. That's what they're worrying about, too. <laughs> 
not an excellent opportunity to clear up the front is the only issue. Get high side the center line top blue, try and get some action. May run that yellow rock into the if you're doing that, I think you're playing for for a blank. There's still time to get the blank here. And I think now is the decision time. We'll see if they go back to the draw or move out to hit the guards. And the umpire's out there indicating the timeout has elapsed. So time's back. Stewart has to leave, but the team's still chatting a little bit about it. Looks no. like they're settling on that draw, though. Now, there's a ton of rocks in play down there, but yellow still has five to throw and blue still has four. So, I don't know if they went back to the draw. They're actually hitting the back blue. This is to preserve the chance for a multiple score. The concern you can probably imagine is you're throwing and your shooter will be behind the D line. They're high side right now. I'm just trying to get this to curl. They don't want to jam on their own yellow. Make contact with it, but it doesn't remove the yellow. So good sweeping from Emma to get that little bit of curl. And Team Breen doesn't have much of a choice here. They don't have a straightforward double. This play is to behind those guards. This one's moving a lot more than what we just saw. Will it get by? Uh oh. Just wicks the front, doesn't remove it, stays out there, but three yellows still in the rings. Everybody really did their best there. It's frustrating for that to have not worked out for them. Yeah, so I think now Arsenal has to draw. They have to put one in the top of the rings. Yeah. And I, they wouldn't miss fully buried. The key here, I think, is to have this accessible to use later. Could be a second or third point. Top eight foot was the call. Don't want it too deep. Team Arsenal seems to have their rocks going a little straighter on this side of the sheet. They haven't had as much movement as Team Breen. And this one going deep. And we'll take that nice far back. You don't get back four foot and leave a big old pocket. Again, Team Breen really forced into this. This is the risk of really trying to force the other team. Sometimes you force them into a <laughs> bunch. Unfortunate miss on Marley's first, so she'll try and recover here. And this one's caught that path that Team Arsenal seems to find. It's hanging a bit straighter. Might get to nose. Just. And some risky times for Team Breen. Marion's initial thought is to roll into the center. Doesn't have to roll to the center. I think nose is probably worst case. Leave Breen the same hit and roll. So you want to roll somewhere. Rolling away risks a jam. So was the call. Breen will have a freeze, but she won't have a lot of space to get there. Thank you so much. This one's hanging as well. Will it come up enough to make contact? They want to avoid this jam big jam there. And that's really unfortunate. Yeah. He's on his way. So Team Breen, surprising, sits one now. The intern draw, tuck a piece of this in the really nicely.
big change in momentum this end with that one shot. Throwing to sit four and Breen sits one now. So here comes the draw from Teresa. She's looking to leave this top eight foot, maybe even in the top four foot. Have a piece buried. Doesn't need to be fully buried. Sweepers must be concerned about the weight there. Yeah, they get called on as well, but line looks like there's lots of room. Yep, they put their head down and stayed down the whole way up. Now trying to get the finish. It looked pretty cute. Good enough for second, maybe even shot stone, but uh, the important thing is that little piece is under that guard. Good. So may it, but her shooter will roll wide. So this that's why that's important. This is for the force for Team Breen. Marion's going to have to roll open. Teresa will have a hit to sit two, and that will be the force. Marianne Arsenault, her first ninth, looking to hit and stay. We've seen wide of the four-foot line have hung straight, but a couple stones in tighter have curled. Going for line here. Are they by? Oh. Watch. Oh, too far. Yeah, the shot's not over when you run into the guard. Still lots of things So can Team happen. Breen, will they tap their top eight-foot stone up to the button? Right now, Marion has a draw to the full eight for the single. Don't know that they have a great draw. I mean, there's going to be the intern and the outturn wide on either side. That's why I'm thinking a tap might be nice here. They're looking at the guard, guarding this intern draw. No one's played the outturn this end, so it would be a new path if that's what Marianne has to play. I love I love a tap here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but uh, I really do think they're trying to force. If it's not the tap, I like the draw on this side because I think both teams have really struggled with the other side this game in that particular spot. Spend some time with Harold. Maybe they haven't struggled, or it's, been, it's just been a difficult piece of ice. So the call here is for a tight guard, trying to keep it in the draw path, a little wide of center line. Looks like air for weight. Needs to stop. <laughs> it's going to take away a bit of that draw, but not much, just about a half a rock. So the draw to the forefoot is still there for Marianne. Looks like we've had handshakes on sheet E in Jones versus McAvoy. Although they didn't the end, I think we can reasonably assume that Jones came up on top there. And we have a ninth end score in Hilliard Matatal. That was a crazy end with everything lined up on the center and Guess what? It was a steal, <laughs> just a single point. As is so often the case when things get lined up like that. So Hilliard leads six to three. We'll keep you updated. They'll finish the tenth before we will, as we watch Marianne Arsenault draw for one against a pair blue green stones. Needs full eight. That might be three blue right now. It is three blue. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, got to get this by the front, and that, then uh, that blue guard is the sweeper sink of the weight here. Have to get it by first, though. Oh, Will they? Thus, Ooh. thank your sweepers. Great shot. What a great job Emma and Jen did there. Good for the one. What a 
eventful end that was. Arsenal will lead eight to seven. Breen with Hammer coming home. So we're again gonna have lots of rocks in play. Breen's gonna be looking for those two points and Arsenal, they can force an extra if they force it to a single, but they'll probably work fairly hard for the steal, try and finish it in 10. Force and a steal often look pretty similar. If you reel, you go all out. Um, in the case where they're up one, you have to be a little more careful not to set up a score of two for Team Breen. So here we go, 10th end of draw one of the 2020 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. I feel like I've said 2019 already today for this. It is 2020. <laughs> There's no venue for feedback, so <laughs> we wouldn't know. Tell me later. <laughs> and if I'm looking at the right time clocks, both teams are within seconds. Oh, it's not theirs. Well, I don't know how much time they have left. <laughs> I'm going to guess not a whole lot. No, if a team that's... Oh, four minutes. About four minutes apiece. Thank you. Oh, that's quite a bit more than I expected. They did catch up to uh, some of the other teams. Lots of rocks in play, but fairly quick decisions for the most part. That's where thinking time comes in. You can have lots of rocks in play, and throwing draws doesn't penalize you and use up any more time than a hit does. Yeah, it's a huge difference. So Team Breen. Needing the two points, using the center guard. Sometimes you'll see the team with hammer put up a corner in this case in order to really go for that second point. You can get forced by playing around the center guard. Team Arsenal will be happy with that. They have a center guard and a back eight foot rock. That rock looks like it's really curling to me. Yeah, the come around is the call. I'm a little surprised they didn't call a second center guard. It's a pretty good come around. Well, it's buried. Not shot stone, but it's in front of the T line. So Team Breen, they're happy to keep play in the ring, so try and keep their thrown stones around. That's what we're looking for here for Team Breen. Even if they wick the guard and not remove it, of course. Not yet. They don't need to remove the yellow. Just keep the shooter around. Waiting for this one to curl. It's starting to move now. Need to make contact with the yellow. So watch this shooter. Sticks around back 12, so that's number two. That was another one of those big fighting spins that you see on the recently resurfaced rocks. So Marianne just indicating yellow shot over on the side. They really do have to keep play to the center, but be mindful of those blue stones in behind. A force is acceptable for Team Arsenault to force Breen to a single. They can't afford to give up the two. That's game. So needing curl out of this one. Weight's great. Looks like it's probably available to Jocelyn. I don't think that came up quite as much as they wanted it to. No, a little bit of a different path on the first than uh, Emma's. 
I think I must curl a little more than Jen's as well. So this again, soft weight hit. It'll be beneficial for Team Breen to keep this one on the side eight foot. This one's hanging a bit wider than Amanda's. Jocelyn's maybe a bit straighter. Starting to curl now. As long as they make contact, should be okay. And they did. So Marley's able to get that yellow to the back 12 foot. So numbers two and three, blue. They're developing quite the collection of rocks in the back of the... Team Arsenal keeps preferring this out turn side. We did see good finish on the intern side in another uh, in the eighth then, so I wouldn't be surprised if they switch. I know they're trying to keep the Yellowstone separated and that's why they're playing on this opposite side. And look, this one's if they can get the finish here. This one's a little deeper. Team Breen. The yellow and the blue are a little tighter together than they were before, so there's a jam possibility. I think Teresa's asking Jocelyn to actually come to the nose of this. Working the guard's not a bad result here. With uh, two games off the ice, I heard from the men's draw earlier, it slowed down. I was going to say earlier, I find when I'm playing it gets colder and slower real fast when, it's, when there start being fewer people out there, it's fewer bodies. Also when uh, Brothers game ended, people were in the stands and they left and that's going to make a difference in the, in the temperature in the ice shed as well. So Team Arsenal, they still have a guard out front, but a little bit nervous times. You've got a lot of blues in the rings. Those are... Those are winning points there. So, I see Marianne asking Christina for how the top eight. Lucky for us to know that guard stayed out front so they can use it. <laughs> Looks like yellow counting the back blue. It's really hard to tell on our overhead. But, uh, a little security doesn't hurt. This line is a lot better than the previous couple there for weight, though. Have to get full eight. They will. Good shot from Christina Black. That's clearly second shot now. So here you see for Team Breen that yellow is hurting them. So Marley's running this back. The only issue I see with this is she's going to hit this on the nose and leave a guard. I'd be tempted to clear the front. Right now, Breen really needs to score. They have to score to tie and force the extra. Replacing guards. I wouldn't be upset at that overcurl, except where the, that raised rock just rolled to oh, side yeah. four foot. Might be a way to access the button for Teresa later, though. Remember it's behind or on and behind the T-line like that. There's not a whole lot Arsenal can do with it. Hope it stays there. Or I guess they could use it to hit Emerald to the center the same way that Breen could. So Marianne's looking at the different options that uh, Teresa will have as we have a timeout here. So I think the team knows they want to call which rock do you guard? She's looking at the options that Teresa has. I, I think you have to guard on the, kind of where it was before, in front of, uh, the two that are on the side, the side of center, drawing, playing a tap into the forefoot area. I think Breen will just blast at that point. In this case for Arsenault, they're eyeing the steel, they're eyeing the win. 
So I don't know that bringing play into the rings is going to benefit other than it will potentially block both Breen has. Uh, the game has ended on B with uh, Hilliard coming out on top. So Team Arsenal took the time out, but Team Breen will have a chance to discuss what they're potentially going to have on the next shot. Christine is indicating a, an in-off on the, the top of the eight foot there on the left. Yeah, so they're looking what Teresa will have. So the end result, I think, is a guard in the same spot. Or are they hitting the blue? Hitting the blue. Yeah. Taking the shot away from Teresa, rolling the shooter into the forefoot. They didn't waste any time getting the stone moving, did they? Watch this roll. Nope. Get as far as they wanted to. So right now, Breen's objective is to score. Open up that forefoot. I don't think this is too much of a surprise. I <laughs> think this would have been called no matter what. Run Marley's second. This is the last of Mate's stones. She overcurled her first. This one they're sweeping for line as well. I'm going to try and catch two of these yellows. Oh. Right through the hole at the back. Opens up that forefoot. I think you'll find yellow still one two there though. Yeah, but yep. importantly the forefoot's open. Yeah, that is significant. And a tap on a blue right at the front, so Options. still looking good for the force for Arsenault. But a chance to score for Breen. Both back and forth here. We're the lone game out, so uh, I haven't been timing the hog-to-hogs, but I'm going to assume that things have slowed down a little bit. The rocks are looking like they're traveling a little harder, faster out of the players' hands and coming down a lot more. Sweepers have had to adjust. Going hard for weight and line on this. And I'm going to assume the sweeper's arms are getting a little tired, too. It's a lot of sweep in this game. And this late in the game. Team Breen, they're going to call their first time out. More a chance to discuss how the next two shots are going to go. So with that, uh, one coming up light there from Marianne. If Teresa, I think they probably have decided this is the call regardless. This long. Hit and roll to sit one up the draw path, but this gives them the chance to potentially get that second point. Marianne will have uh, an intern draw on the other side. But uh, Marianne, with that rock that she just threw coming, not as much of a tap opportunity on it as she would probably like. And we were paying attention to those 12-foot blues around the edge in the back, but at this end, there's been enough play in the front of the rings that one of these skip stones is likely going to be the final point in 10. 
Arsenault up one. Needs to force or steal. Four one to keep the game going. So this is a hit and roll to the center line. She can get a piece of the forefoot with this. We've seen a couple hits track here. Outside that forefoot, and this one is doing the same. So yellow is shot. Blue looks to be two. Just two. Yeah, that rock had to curl and just get a little inside roll anywhere. So Marianne has the same draw to sit two here. Try and shut down the game. Probably throw a little extra weight at this. The broom's a little further out. She has to go around the one she just threw. The tight yellow guard. So for Marianne, trying to sit first and second shot here. They can wick off this blue too if it's a little heavy. Which I think it might be. They need the wick now. They're sweeping for the wick. They got it. Where will the shooter go? Right on the button. Good plan B. That one had a little backspin on it. A lot of blues hanging around, but yellow sits two here. Is there a shot for a multiple? I don't think so. How does Teresa score? got that sort of difficult tap on the blue one that's near the center line and I think that's about it. Or I guess it's a raise. I think that's about it. This is tough if she's calling what I think she's calling. A raise on the blue. Weak by that guard. I think that's all she's got though. I mean there's a thin in off <laughs> from a wide guard. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Nothing on that yellow on the side. A very flat yellow. So the raise. This is just for the single. This is to push the extra end. What an intense tenth. <laughs> Last rock here of draw one. Teresa Breen to force the extra. It's going to be really close. Amanda England on it for line. And they get it by. No. And a wick. So the final score after a steal of two will be seven. Feels a lot closer than that for behind the glass. What a tight game, Breen. Arsenault, Arsenault taking the win on that. Denise Nicholson, thank you. Thank you, Selena. It it's nice been a pleasure. Yes, and uh, we'll catch everyone back for the 2020 Deloitte Tanker Draw 2 tomorrow morning. Check out scores at Thanks, folks. Thank you.